Hi folks, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. Today I want to take a look at a kind of paper which is actually pretty rare and I wish people wrote more frequently. It is a retrospective and a very honest one at over a decade of development on TinyOS. The TinyOS project was started in 2000 and this paper was written in 2012 and it is an operating system that served as a research vehicle for how to build very low power sensor networks. Over its lifetime it was a pretty successful project, at least as far as research projects go. It was the basis for many other research projects that built on top of it and was even used in some commercial products. The paper covers many lessons learned over the lifetime of the project, but I want to cover three in particular. To set the context for those, we have to realize the overarching design goals for TinyOS, and there were two of them. The first one was reducing resource use as much as possible, because these nodes were out there in the world. These were sensor networks with very, very low power resources. Every byte you sent on the network was reducing the lifetime of your node. And the second design goal was preventing bugs. Again, when a sensor network is deployed out into the real world, debugging it can be really difficult, if not impossible. So you want to be able to write your sensor network applications to be as bug-free as possible to start with. And this brings us to the first lesson they learned, which was striking the right balance between complexity and simplicity. So TinyOS developed its own homegrown language called Nessy, and this allowed them to really meet their design goals that we talked about earlier, to reduce resource usage and to be able to write programs in a bug-free manner for sensor networks. However, there was a price paid for this. This language grew complex over time as it tried to meet these design goals. As the author puts it so well over here, making it harder to write buggy code had the unfortunate result of making it just plain harder to write code. And this led to a classic worse is better path for the project where other do-it-yourself solutions like Arduino, for example, even though they were feature poor compared to Nessie and TinyOS, pulled way ahead because they were much more approachable to beginners. This was lesson number two. You want to make the overall system simple enough that it is attractive to beginners. The third lesson I want to talk about is how they designed components and what they learned from that. So components was a key part of TinyOS's and Nessie's programming model. And it was desirable for all the classic reasons that people like components, which is separation of interfaces and implementation, hiding data, and allowing code reuse. All that sounds great. The problem was that they took fine-grained components too far. Here the author gives an example of how their radio driver, which was only about two and a half thousand lines of code, used 41 different components and was spread across 40 files. This made it extremely hard for newcomers to understand the system. There were just too many levels of indirection and it was hard to understand the global structure. What the authors realized is that when they talk about code reuse, they really mean reuse within the same system. And when you take that view of it, what you really want is a working solid artifact rather than a general architecture. So those were some lessons from a decade long research project which I think are really insightful and profound. And it's really refreshing to see this level of honesty and candor from one of the principles of the project looking back. I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you next time. Thank you very much.